Let me um, change the subject briefly to remark on a different occasion, also oceans related. Uh, we have just been through the 200th anniversary of one of the pivotal naval victories in our nation's history, which was led by a great Rhode Island hero, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. Commodore Perry was born just after the dawn of our republic in 1785 in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. His father, Christopher Perry, had fought in the American Revolution, and after the war, he became a captain in the U.S. Navy. By the time young Oliver reached his teenage years, he was already serving as a midshipman on his father's vessel. Interestingly enough, his father's vessel was called the General Green named after Rhode Island's Revolutionary War hero, Nathaniel Green, whose statue stands over in this building in the center of the Capitol, and who is renowned. Uh, General Cornwallis is reputed to have said, that Green is more dangerous than Washington. Well, young Oliver Hazard Perry was also destined for great things. The late 1700s and the early 1800s were a very precarious time for this fledgling American democracy, and it was still an open question whether our experiment in self-government would endure. So in 1812, when America once again declared war on Britain, following a series of disputes over trade and territory, the future of this young democracy hung in the balance. Oliver Hazard Perry went to war. He began his war service in Newport, Rhode Island, but in February of 1813, as the War of 1812 raged on, Perry was given command of the American forces on Lake Erie. When Perry arrived in the region, the British had taken Detroit and were looking to expand their control of the American Northwest. As Richard Snow wrote in his chronicle of the Battle of Lake Erie for American Heritage Magazine, Perry took command vigorously and at once. He oversaw an aggressive shipbuilding operation on the lake's shore and worked diligently to raise enough men and guns to carry out his mission. General William Henry Harrison, later to be president, had positioned his fleet into a stalemate with British General Henry Proctor on Lake Erie, leaving Perry and his fleet with the responsibility of retaking the lake for the United States. Perry sailed west and holed up in Put-In Bay on Lake Erie's South Bass Island. There he waited until on September 10, 1813, Robert Harriet Barclay sailed his British command within sight of Commodore Perry's lookout. As Snow wrote about that, the American ships cleared for action. Stands of cutlasses were set up on deck. Shot was placed near the guns and the hatches were closed. Sand was sprinkled on the decks so that the sailors could keep their footing when the blood began to flow. Perry brought the ship's papers wrapped in lead to the ship's surgeon and told him to throw them overboard should the Lawrence be forced to strike. Sometime during the morning, he hoisted his battle flag, a blue banner bearing the dying words attributed to Captain Lawrence, don't give up the ship. The battle commenced but the British were better armed and gained an early advantage. Soon enough, Perry's flagship, the Lawrence, was crippled, but he refused to give up. He took down his flag, he climbed aboard a small rowboat, and he made his way toward the Niagara, the Lawrence's sister ship, which had yet to engage in the battle. Perry's crossing between the ships is the inspiration for William Henry Powell's painting, which hangs in the staircase directly outside of this room right now. It is the biggest painting in the Senate, and it features a hero of the littlest state in the country. From the Niagara, Perry re-engaged the battle with the British and ultimately gained the day. He forced their surrender and sent the now famous message to General Harrison we have met the enemy, and they are ours. Lake Erie had been secured 
for America. The War of 1812 continued on through 1814, but Perry's victory on Lake Erie was pivotal. Had the British taken Lake Erie, it would have provided a base for attacks down into New York or into the new state of Ohio and for control of the American Northwest. Instead, the Treaty of Ghent ended the conflict with no loss of territory or trade to the United States. Perry continued his naval service after the war, but he contracted yellow fever during a mission to Venezuela in 1819, and he died at the age of 34. Today, his name and his actions are remembered in ways large and small throughout our country. In Ohio, on Lake Erie, a bicentennial celebration was held this year commemorating the great battle. And put in bay boasts a memorial maintained by the National Park Service, the Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial. And I'm told that up there you can toast to Perry's victory with a Commodore Perry IPA, courtesy of Cleveland's Great Lakes Brewing Company. In Rhode Island, you can travel along Commodore Perry Highway in his native South Kingstown, or visit the newly commissioned Rhode Island tall ship SSV Oliver Hazard Perry, which will provide education at sea programs to Rhode Island kids. It is fitting that we continue to honor this great Rhode Islander. His victory on Lake Erie was, to borrow from Churchill, one of those sharp agate points on which history turned. And so today, I hope we will all take just a moment and remember Oliver Hazard Perry and to reflect on how differently our world would have turned out were it not for his actions. I thank the chair, I yield the floor, and I note the absence of a quorum.